In today's video I'm going to show you my steps to follow uh, when starting a logo project and completing it for a real client. Hello everyone, my name is Jeroen van Eerden, I'm a freelance logo and identity designer from the Netherlands and I want to make a video about my steps that I take within each project. Uh, so it's really a video about uh, logo design from start to finish and uh, I wanted to take you with me in my workflow which I have created over the years. And if you have questions feel free to ask me in the comment section below. And I'm always happy if you like this video, of course, and sub subscribe to my video channel. Uh, I'm planning to post more videos like this uh, in the future. So I hope you enjoy. So the first step. First step is client inquiry. So the client reached out to me and they often sent me an email uh, requesting for a specific project and in most of the cases this is about uh, create a logo design or a logo redesign and there is the moment that you can really uh, engage with your client and uh, get to know them a little bit better uh, because you are the designer you have to solve the problem for a better design and uh, it really needs to match this client and this business and also the target audience of course so you have to really negotiate what, the, what are the needs uh, the complexity of the project uh, what is the budget and um, yeah, how to get started from there. So here's the quick brief that uh, I had received from a client. Uh, tells me a little bit more about the service that they are making. And uh, Kodo is all about connecting people as an activation platform. They build softwares and uh, also is uh, for the modern employee. In short, they uh, connect companies to its people to succeed, to succeed in a new way and it's the better way. I uh, come up with the idea to look more into the word Kodo, it seems to be a Japanese word. Confies two meanings, it's uh, first uh, the heartbeat that's the primal source of all written and read in a different way, the word can mean children of the drum. So consider these facts as creative ingredients uh, for logo design uh, concepts uh, and bring in new opportunities to create more unique and personal directions. So especially the part of the drum I felt was interesting and also the rhythm uh, keeps some sort of balance in your work environment. So the second step is down payments. Uh, I have experienced in the past as uh, when you don't ask for down payment you never know for sure if a client is trustable or whatever so as a freelancer especially you want to make sure that there has already been paid so i only start on the project once there's been paid at least 50 percent of the project it really depends on the project scale of course if it's a, a super large uh, amount then i can cut it in three or four times but usually i ask for 50 percent up front uh, and for most of those clients, they don't really uh, think that it is weird to ask money up front because uh, most of them are really known with this type of work and uh, working with freelancers. Uh, so ask 50% up front, it's more secure as a freelancer. The next step is doing research and in this uh, stage I'm going to look offline and online uh, for specific inspiration and also articles and uh, information about the brand I'm working on. Firstly I'm uh, making sure the brief is clear to me and all questions are answered by my clients and uh, that I can start doing my research. I often look for uh, research on uh, Dribble, Behance and Local Lounge. Uh, I see those uh, as portfolio platforms uh, so I can really look for uh, sim similar uh, designs and also to find inspirational uh, designs that maybe are interesting uh, to look further into. Then there are social platforms and uh, general uh, search methods uh, that I'm using. Of course Instagram similar as portfolio platforms but it's more like a social platform of course. Uh, you can get inspiration from that uh, platform and also Google, you can search for all sorts of uh, 
uh, information such as the target audience, competitors, industry of the market and archetypes I look into as well. Uh, the color and typography so those things are really in interesting to look in uh, a little bit more when you're doing your online research so offline part is really about uh, getting more into books and articles that you can look into the art articles and uh, uh, like uh, websites you can also look online of course but sometimes I prefer to do things offline as well so uh, I look into uh, interesting books about maybe old logo marks and stuff to find really like original ideas and maybe uh, find inspirational designs there. The other part uh, I think is really important to have like human engagement as well. So talk with people who are into this uh, business and uh, use questionnaires for your clients. Uh, you can also interview experts and people who are working there and overall getting more involved uh, with the people uh, is very important because they really uh, appreciate that as well and I think it's good for collab collaborating as well. So the fourth step, concept discovery. Uh, here's the moment that I'm gonna sketch out all my ideas that I had uh, after reading the brief and after doing my research. Uh, I always feel like making sketches is more like having my ideas put down on paper uh, before I forget any of these and I don't think that they always needed to be perfect but uh, it's really like a starting point for me before I open my illustrator. The next step is concept development. It's really one of my most favorite steps because there I can actually work within an illustrator and see for my own eyes what is potential or not. And sometimes I even skip the whole sketching part because uh, I'm well known with the illustrator tools and it is sometimes easier for me to write dire directly dive within illustrator and work out my ideas. I first start with creating a, some sort of mind map brainstorm session and I collect keywords that help me uh, combine specific elements and in this case I wanted to have something relevant to uh, a Japanese tree because the name of the brand Kodo has to do with uh, a Jap Japanese mindset and it's uh, all about a work environment um, I wanted to also use the letter K but I don't want to feel too attached to that because I don't want that to be too much of an influence of this direction but some of my concepts are usually working within a letter K so it's uh, not uh, well not that I want to leave it out uh, other part network connect uh, growing together so something uh, that's growing together and Japanese tree is uh, one element actually but uh, you get the idea from that and also education uh, and, and involvement and friendliness. I want to be approachable with this concept and also because Kodo wants to be an approachable brand. So I worked out this uh, one of the first concepts. Um, this was like the Japanese tree what I wanted to uh, aim for and also the letter K. Um, this logo was went unused, so it's uh, it was in a good direction, but uh, it didn't felt uh, perfect yet. So I went on with other concepts, and uh, this is something completely different. Here I started really with the letter K, and uh, used references uh, with my client, uh, which my client sent to me, and uh, worked out specific uh, word marks for the Kodo brand. Uh, some of these were uh, working and some of these weren't at all. 
it was really to just explore around for myself and see what is working or not. Also here you can see more of those uh, Japanese trees. I want to do like a bonsai tree. Uh, and some of these worked and some of these didn't work. It was really uh, like exploring for myself to uh, find the best solution. Here's a more abstract direction that I went with. Uh, and it was more like I shared these online because I want to get feedback from it if uh, people understood the concept of it. But I felt it was a little bit too abstract. Uh, so I went on with something else. Uh, and I kept on uh, coming back to the old tree uh, part. And I felt this was like the, the core idea of what I was aiming for. And throughout my whole process, I uh, kept on aiming, aiming towards this. And eventually there was like a concept, uh, this concept here, uh, which really was like a, a very balanced abstract shape. Uh, also very shooting uh, next to the typeface. Uh, and I uh, tried to uh, link every element within this mark to a specific element. Uh, so uh, there's like a work environment, uh, I want to refer to the culture, I want to refer to the tools uh, they've been using, uh, also the workplace. And in the middle, middle uh, like the arrow is like the focus point. I uh, also created a simple grid for it, just to have like everything in balance and perfectly aligned. And uh, later on, I kept on working on uh, well, the, all my concepts here, which you can see, I put everything together and uh, I don't always share all of these uh, with my client because I want to only select the best ones uh, with the most highest potential. Um, and yeah, it was really like exploring towards this direction, which my client really loved. And I created a micro style guide, as you can see here. I uh, post these style guides often via my social pages to search um, Dribbble and um, Instagram. Uh, also to collect feedback from other designers. It really helps me uh, getting ideas out of my head quickly and easily in one specific form. And so it is easier for my audience as well to understand the concept quickly. Uh, and as you can see here, I have everything like uh, very briefly like the intro of a company and what the service is all about. I have something about the values of the company and the service. But also again about the concept and uh, I really like to unfold the whole concept and that people can understand my uh, thinking process in these designs. Also the typography which I used and I feel like it's all connecting with each other, it's making a, a whole. So this is really like the, the steps within the illustrator part where I develop all my concepts and um, yeah I picked uh, or my client picked this one is eventually and I was really happy with this so let's dive in into my illustrator again I uh, I'm going to show you a little bit a quick uh, video about how I developed this mark and I've been exploring around uh, working out different letter K and trying to find some abstracts and uh, subtle references towards like the letter K and also elements which can refer to my concepts which I had in mind such as the Japanese tree or other more balanced and, and written uh, kind of shapes. So this was like uh, the newest uh, concept that I went with uh, like the this minimal and simple looking uh, yeah, tree and here you can see how I kind of developed this one and still playing around with different shapes and different directions so it's always about exploring around and not, not always settle for the first idea but just play around and give yourself time to also be creative and get more thinking more deeper into this concept and also other concepts to get more a little bit out of the box.
during working on these concepts I felt like it was interesting to also use the negative spaces of the letter O, D and O uh, to fill up those dots from the tree. Just a perfect uh, idea that came together and it worked out very good. The next step is uh, asking feedback from peer designers online and this is a step that I only can take uh, when I get the permission to post stuff online and especially when I have uh, concepts created uh, during a project uh, and I share stuff via my Dribbble and via Behance and also on my Instagram. It's really to gather information from other designers. Uh, to make sure that the concept is maybe unique or isn't unique or uh, is there something that I can change and uh, make it better. So it's really to uh, use my audience as well uh, to make my designs better and it's really useful for my clients as well. Next step is Concept presentation and this is a nice part is also a challenging part because you want to convince your client that this is the route that they need to go with and I often do this in uh, no, multiple multiple ways uh, I have the micro style guides that I often present in case where a client needs uh, quickly uh, concepts uh, presented uh, and I also can uh, create full PDF files uh, which I can send to them via email or if uh, they prefer they can uh, walk it over uh, and talk it through over Skype for example. So the next part is uh, revisions. So in some cases um, a client maybe thinks the concept works but there are maybe some tweaks that are needed to make it perfect so in those cases I can uh, offer refinements and revisions uh, to make it perfect uh, in some cases I can limit those uh, amount of revisions per concept because uh, I also usually work with fixed prices and then you have to set boundaries uh, and limits how far these concepts can uh, be revised The next step is uh, logo design improvement and that is a nice step because uh, your work just got approved and uh, they are happy with the result. And the next step is of course uh, asking for the final payment before you send over any fa source files. So it's always important to get your money uh, before you send over the files because uh, you don't have any leverage anymore when you're already sending your files. So make sure to ask for the final payment first uh, and then prepare your files. So the next step is a logo design delivery and I always ask for my clients uh, what type of delivery they prefer. So I've been using a retransfer in the past or uh, just sending via email, also via Skype if they prefer that. Uh, it's really to make it easier for my clients to get the files the way they wanted it. The client just approved this design and also the payments, the final payments uh, is just received. So it is my task now to create those logo design packages that the client can use. And to do this I'm using the plugin called Logo Package Express and I'm gonna demonstrate you how I use this. It is super easy, it is just you select the logo that you want, click on set logo and now creates a new folder and I can select the icon and set this as a logo mark and also the logo type and set this as a logo type. I don't have a tagline so I don't have to use this and I can now click on make web logos and it creates a whole series of uh, file formats that I can export now. So I can export the whole package and I selected everything here. I created the logo design package and it creates these folders where everything 
will be in like you've got every naming of those folders it's just perfect to uh, have everything in order and it is so easy to use and once this is completed you can also start on making print logos when I click on that it creates all sort of print logos and uh, similar as the web logos you can also export those and everything comes together within the same folders next part is uh, project evaluation I always feel like it's good to learn from mistakes if they're made and uh, to really grow as a designer and a freelancer as well and the best way is uh, to ask for specific feedback and to learn from that uh, next one is I use LinkedIn lately a lot uh, for uh, asking uh, recommendations for my clients. So once I completed the project, as I did now, I asked them uh, to write a rec recommendation on my profile so other potential clients can also see their experience with me. And um, if they don't have LinkedIn, I ask for a review that they write on the project so I can put that on my website and portfolio and stuff. So those are the steps that I take I mean, with an average project like this, like a logo design project. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, please let me know if there are any tips in any next uh, videos that I want to create. Uh, I'm still learning in making these videos so it's really useful for me if you uh, give a thumbs up of course and uh, subscribe if you want to see more like these. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.